The confirmation hearings for Trump's cabinet picks kick off next week, and while some hearings are yet to be scheduled, have a look at this. There are hearings for six different cabinet members, all scheduled for the same day, next Wednesday, including what would be day two of hearings for Attorney General pick Jeff Sessions, who civil rights groups opposed due to his past and allegations of racism. Wednesday will also be the day for hearings for Secretary of State pick Rex Tillerson, the ExxonMobil CEO with close ties to Russia, and Education Secretary pick Betsy, Betsy Davos, who has long favored charter schools and vouchers over public schools. Also that day, Trump has claimed via Twitter that he'll hold his first press conference since July on Wednesday, though it remains to be seen whether he'll actually do that, since he's claimed he'd have press conferences in the past and it never happened. The packed schedule could ensure that the headlines from the hearings will get buried, which may be the point. We should note that back in January of 2009, four of President Obama's picks had hearings on the same day, but those picks were far less controversial. There were two fewer candidates, and the president-elect hadn't claimed he was holding a press conference. And by the way, it's not just about what the hear what, when the hearings take place, but the kind of scrutiny that candidates will receive, and there's actually more. And one of our next guests has broken some news on that front, and we will explain next. And joining me now is MSNBC contributor, next is now, Joan Walsh, national affairs correspondent for The Nation, and Professor Jason Johnson, politics editor at The Root. Magic. All right, Joan, so you, you have a scoop on not just the what and the when, but the mechanics of these upcoming hearings for Jeff Sessions. Yes, I mean, advocates, and not just advocates, Senator Feinstein, who's now the chair of the Ju Judiciary Committee, uh, Senator Leahy, who's the past chair, they have asked for more time because Jeff Sessions has not completed his judiciary questionnaire. It's woefully incomplete. Uh, and there's a lot to get through. I mean, the man had three days of hearings when he was rejected uh, for a federal judgeship. Right. It's great that he got himself elected uh, from the state of Alabama, but he, that's not the same as being prepared to be the top law enforcement officer. So they've been asking for more time, they've been asking for more witnesses, but uh, Chairman Grassley has said no. Yesterday came out with a schedule. Uh, the Democrats will get four witnesses. Only four witnesses. Only four witnesses. Uh, and it will be only two days and there will be no delay despite the woefully inadequate uh, disclosures that he's made. And now, Jason, that seems, first of all, shocking that you could, could possibly limit the Democrats to only four people, four yes. witnesses that can testify. Um, does that sound like it's feasible to get through all of the past that uh, baggage that Jeff Sessions is dragging with him to Washington? It's, it's, it takes a long time to lay out just how much of a bigot he is. And, you know, and so I think that, I, and here's the thing that I think is important. Given the fact that, again, this guy was rejected, you know, 30 years ago, he has statements today, and I think that one of the things that any witness would want to do is say, look, it's not just that he may be a bigot, but there are consequences to that attitude being in this position. And that requires time, that requires witnesses, that's clearly not something the Republican Congress wants to do, and there will be bad consequences for rushing this through when he has to actually adjudicate on behalf of this nation. And Joan, do you have any reporting on, the, now that it's going to be a scramble, right. so civil rights groups and, and others that are post sessions are going to have to choose, right? Because you've got criminal justice reform issues with him, you've got obviously direct race issues, but you've also got voting rights. You've got voting rights, you've got banking you, you know right. there, there's just there's so much it's gonna be very hard to choose those four witnesses but you know what people have told me which is kind of interesting they're very upset about this truncated hearing but they're also saying they will push senators to bring some of this stuff up on the floor when this goes to a vote assuming he's gonna get out of committee which he will uh, there, there's a lot of push for progressive Democratic senators to oppose him to talk about uh, his record and we'll see what they can get away with under Mitch McConnell but but the battle does not end when the hearing ends next Wednesday. Yeah, we know there, there was civil disobedience in Alabama about right, Jeff Sessions. Right. Have you got any reporting, Jason, that there's going to be some similar civil disobedience actually in Washington? There, there, there will be. There will be. People are talking about it now. The, the, the issue is going to be this. It's just like we saw with the phone calls earlier this week. You've got to put pressure on these senators. Yes. You've got to make that clear. Because, you know, Heidi Heitkamp, you know, you, you've got Democrats who are in red states who are going to say, I can't oppose Trump. They need to get phone calls. Otherwise, pretty much all these nominees, all yeah. these conferences, are going to go. You can anticipate high, uh, high camp mansion. Some of those are going to be yes. counseling. Let's talk about those six people all at one time. How are Democrats deciding how to apportion their time if they've got to deal with Tillerson and Davos and Sessions, et cetera, all at the same time? 
they're f scrambling. I mean, you know, Senator Feinstein wants to be able to grill uh, Mike Pompeo as the CIA director. She may have to choose between her own hearing and, and going to talk to him about torture. I mean, this is just unprecedented. It's, it's given, as you made the point earlier, Barack Obama's cabinet was by and large a lot of senators, a lot of, lot of known quantities. Eric Holder had just been confirmed for a job two years before. So uh, he'd been vetted right. already. There were lots of people with a lot of years and years of vetting. These people are brand new to the jobs they're going to do. Mm -hmm. And in yeah. fact, a lot of them want to dismantle the right. agencies they're supposed to lead and, and protect. Yeah. So there are a lot of questions. There's a lot that remains unknown. Nobody, to my knowledge, has, has completed their, uh, dis their Senate uh, disclosures. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So, you know, you're supposed to have time to look at it, have your staff look at it, talk it over, think about what you're going to ask. It, they're going to get this stuff the night before. So, you know, Democrats are scrambling, they're angry, but they're, they're hanging pretty tough. I'm yeah. kind of impressed. Jason. Joy, you know, how many times can you apply for a job of importance without filling out the application? Yeah. Because I mean, half these people, they haven't filled out the application. So the Democrats, you know, they have to play whack-a-mole with all these different people who are going through. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you one example. You know, uh, the, you know the, the education pick, right? right? This is some of, there are so many different issues connected because now we have criminal justice with education. Now we have, you know, school violence in education. Sure. She doesn't have any history on these issues. And I know that some school choice advocates think that you're always going to end up in dead poet society and it's going to be nice, but it, this requires work. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I, I hope that the Democrats can lay out a plan where even if a lot of these people get through, they can at least put out the message, hey, we stood tough yeah. when some of these people didn't, ha didn't yeah. know the job. Stand tough and fast because it's going to be in two days. Uh, exactly. Two days worth. Uh, Joan Walsh and Jason Johnson, thank you. Thanks. All right.